Okay, you're probably noticing things are a little bit different. Right after I finish this, I'm going to throw uh, a whole explanation up on my Patreon page. So if you're interested in supporting the site and find out more about my changes, check that out. Link down below. Let's talk about the Morris family. And right off the bat, I have to note, when we hear the name Morris and we're thinking about the American Revolution, generally, we think Robert Morris, the financier of the American Revolution, one of the founding fathers who's not necessarily given the credit as some of the other big names, though he might deserve. That Robert Morris is put off for another time. Uh, he is not the founder. We will be looking at today. No, today we are looking at a whole family and I have taken the time to put together a family tree. Now it is not the best family tree in the world. It is my first attempt. It's going to take me a while to figure out how to make a family tree actually look good. I assure you. Uh, I'm going to turn my volume down a little bit. Looks like I'm a little too loud. Don't want to crackle out. Anyway, let's take a look at the Morris family of New York. Lords of Morrisania. Now, right off the bat, we need to say that there were feudal lords in New York leading up to, during, and kind of almost after the American Revolutionary War. Uh, New York had started as a Dutch colony before New York took over. Now, uh, before England took over. Now, England took over New York about 100 years before the American Revolution, but a lot of the Dutch ancestry was there. Uh, the, at first, the, these landowners, who not only had slave, uh, Africans come, brought over as slaves, but, but the white people who worked the land, too, were essentially serfs, feudal serfs. Uh, and and there were they were called patroons under the Dutch title, but then they eventually became known as lords, lords of the manor. And as you see above me, lords of the manor of New York. And this manor became known as Morrisania, which was actually one of the smaller manors. But as we'll get to it uh, a little bit at the end, uh, Morrisania is now Morrisania in uh, Bronx, New York. Uh, and that's exactly where they bought the land. It was from a man uh, named Joseph Bronk, Joseph Bronk, I believe was his name. But let's so let's like, take a look at the Morris family. And right up at the top, I have two Morrises here. These are siblings. And I know we talk about the American Revolution here. I'm just giving you a little background so we can get to the important revolutionaries in this story. Uh, Richard Morris right here was the first caretaker. I'm sorry, the, the first caretaker. Uh, the first Morris in the United States. He came over with his wife, Sarah, and they had a kid in 16... Uh, uh, they had a kid, Lewis Morris, over here in 1671. And I'm getting the hangs of, hang of the controls of this new thing. Now, you'll notice Lewis Morris was born in 1671, and his father died in 1672. So he was a baby, and that's where Lewis Morris, the other brother, comes into play. Now, I'm going to note right now, we are going to use the name Lewis Morris very frequently <laughs> this afternoon. Now, I'm going to call this one the caretaker, a.k.a. Lewis Morris, the uncle. Now, there, I, I saw somewhere it said that he, uh, Lewis Morris, and his brother Richard both bought land in the United, uh, well, North America at the same time. Uh, but the, the more reliable source I saw said that Colonel Lewis Morris, the uncle over here, he was actually in the Bahamas. Both Morrises had left England and went to the Bahamas. Richard ends up going to New York, buying this property that becomes Morrisania, and his uh, brother Lewis only comes over after his death to take care of the property and the son. Lewis Morris, uh, the, 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 Lewis Morris, known as the first Lord of Morrisania, because he's the one who takes this land and property his father purchased and turns it into uh, an actual, uh, becomes a Lord, which again, England, even though it was from Dutch heritage, the feudal Lord system in New York, uh, England kind of kept it around because, you know, England had Lords of their own. Now he was not a Lord, uh, according to the British nobility, uh, but he was Lord of this particular manor. Now, and I'll zoom in on him as I get used to the controls here. Now, uh, this Lewis Morris is an extremely important character um, in the development of early New York. He is, uh, uh, as it says in front of you, he was the first Lord of Morrisania, which was actually one of the smaller uh, feudal kingdoms in New York State uh, during the colonial period, uh, although kingdoms is my word, not an official one. He was also an early Chief Justice of the Colony of New York and Governor of New Jersey. So let me just reiterate that is this man uh was not only one of the most important landowners in the colony of new york again he, he does pass away about 30 years before the revolutionary war but he to establish the morris family in new york he is lord of the manor he is chief justice of new york and at a different time but right afterward governor of new jersey uh new jersey and new york at times were similar to pennsylvania and delaware where they kind of had overlapping authorities at times. Now, I do want to zoom out and get to the good stuff. So, 
Lewis Morris has two children. Uh, well, no, okay. Let me just uh, note that Lewis Morris has a lot of children. In fact, many of the people we're discussing today uh, had lots and lots and lots of children, but I'm, I am I did not put them all in here because, again, this is an American Revolution channel, and I wanted to get to the heart of the how they relate to the American Revolution. So skirting down a little bit, uh, I should zoom in here. Robert Hunter Morris, who we will get back to, uh, was one of his two children, and uh, Lewis Morris the the third uh lewis morris second lord of the manor uh Mo lewis would have uh two wives uh sarah governor and catherine stats and we will talk a little bit about all of their children because they both had revolutionaries birth to them uh we will also come back to robert hunter morris too but i will note that he was governor of pennsylvania at one point colonial pennsylvania and chief justice of new jersey uh, yeah, very interesting. <laughs> Chief Justice of New Jersey and Pennsylvania governor. Um, he also lived, I, I should say, 1700 to 1764. And it's, I, no I noticed this, this was interesting to me. His brother lived 1798 uh, to 1762. So they lived exactly the same length of time, just two years apart. Now we get to the good stuff. Uh, let's get to the American Revolution. Now, again, I don't have every one of their children on here. This is the first time I made one of these, and it doesn't look the prettiest in the world, and I assure you I will work very hard to make ones in the future if you like this kind of thing. Uh, make a look, look a lot nicer. Uh, the oldest child was Mary Morris. Uh, I also didn't have a ton of time to look into every one of these siblings, uh, but I did put in the oldest and the youngest because there's quite an age gap between some of these family members. So Mary Morris, uh, is... Uh, born in 1726, uh, her, uh, I, I don't know if they were twins or if they were just born one in January and one later. They, the, the exact dates, uh, I, I did not find. They were more difficult, believe it or not, than I anticipated. Uh, but they were, seem to have been the born the same year. Um, and as you can see, this is the first big whammy of the Morris family. Lewis Morris third lord of the manor, the fourth Lewis we're discussing today, was a declaration signer. Uh, by which I mean a signer of the United States Declaration of Independence. Now, again, just to note how important the Morris family was, uh, I'll zoom out a little bit. His grandfather had been, uh, was the first one in America, I'm sorry, nope, his grandfather over here, Lewis Morris I, was New York Chief Justice and Governor of New York. His father, who I did not put a lot of uh, uh, information on, oopsie daisy, was also extremely important in New York State and held a ton of very important positions. Uh, and now his son, Lewis Morris, kind of the third, the third Lord Lewis Morris to run the manor, he comes in carrying the weight of the Morris name to the Second Continental Congress. Uh, and signs the Declaration of Independence. And I'll note, uh, in 1776, he was 50 years old. Not very old, but, you know, not one of the younger men. Uh, you know, at a time, John Adams was in his early 40s. Thomas Jefferson was in his uh, early 30s. Uh, so, uh, just to put some, you know, uh, George Washington was also in his mid-40s, I believe. Uh, so, just, uh, you know, he was one of the elder statesmen of the declaration signing. Although, of course, Washington didn't sign the declaration. Just don't call me out there. And this is what he looks like. I did. He's pretty easy to find a picture of. Uh, nice guy. Uh, anyway, uh, he runs the manor. Now, he has a younger brother, uh, Stats Long Morgan, who I've never written about. Although, the ones I have, there are three articles down in the description if you'd like to read more about these people. He was a member of parliament. Because by the time the American Revolution broke out, he was, again, almost in his 40s, uh, in his mid-40s. And, well, what do you know? He was already in the British Army and certainly didn't want to be, you know, fighting his siblings. So, Stats Long Morris actually uh, moves to England and he ends up becoming a member of Parliament during the American Revolution. So, there was a Morris brother signing the Declaration of Independence while his sibling is a member of parliament. 
which is extraordinary. <laughs> um, and then we move on here to Richard Morris, the younger brother who just doesn't get that much attention. Uh, Richard Morris didn't do anything on the national stage, but he was a, very important during the, the outbreak of revolution in New York. He was important to the New York Provincial Congress that took over as the shadow government as the American Revolution got underway. And then very quickly in 17, I believe it was 17, late 1770s, I think it was 1777, uh, for two years, he serves as Chief Justice of New York State. Right after New York's established and they write a constitution, this is the guy they put in charge of the laws, essentially, uh, and determining what the laws are and what is right and wrong. So he, of all the family members we're talking about today, uh, Richard Morris is probably the most underappreciated because he did have an extremely important role, but he had one brother who signed the Declaration of Independence and yet another brother we have not talked about that signed something else. So we will get there in just a second. First, we're going to take a quick pit stop at Isabella Morris. Now, she is one of two Morris sisters that end up, uh, uh, two Morris cousins, I should say, who end up fleeing to Canada because she uh, married a gentleman who was a loyalist. And he ends up, they end up going to Canada. I believe they were in Nova Scotia for a little while waiting uh, for the war to end. Now, I will say about Isabella Morris, once the war cooled down, uh, her and her husband do come back to New York. Uh, they are one of the many patri uh, uh, not patriots, uh, uh, many loyalists who, especially in New York, were kind of quietly welcomed back, uh, not with open arms, but with like hush don't tell arms. Uh, and she came back and, uh, good for her. Now there's another sister that we'll get to that, or again, I'm sorry, cousin we'll get to. Uh, and now I also should note that, uh, Lewis Morris's, the, the second's first wife, actually Catherine Statz passes away in the top left there. Uh, she passed away uh, and then he married Sarah Governor and they, she, she actually makes it through the revolution. Uh, Isabella was her first child. Uh, and Governor Morris was her second child. And Governor, which I think is pronounced Governor, but I just don't, I've always, it looks like Governor to me. Uh, as you can see before you, Governor Morris ends up being a signer of the Constitution. Governor Morris is one of the most fascinating characters involved with the American Revolution. You can see his peg leg. It was often blamed that he was having an affair and ran out of the house when a husband came home naked and got hit by a carriage. That is not what happened. He was climbing into a carriage and it was an unfortunate accident that took his leg. He was, however, known for uh, his association with the ladies, especially married ladies. In fact, his buddy John Jay once said that he wished uh, he, Governor Morris lost something else, quote unquote. Uh, Morris also is not only a person who signed the Constitution, he was one of the three most uh, vocal people at the Constitutional Convention, meaning he spoke not the most, third most, at the Constitutional Convention, if I'm not mistaken. He's definitely top three. I'm pretty sure he was number three. Um, on top of that, he is the draftsman of the Constitution. Once they had all the laws and everything settled, they said, here, Governor, can you just uh, write it up? So when you hear the words, we the people, uh, Governor Morris is the one who wrote that down. So uh, that is everyone produces Governor. Okay, thank you, Trios, for letting I'm not too stressed out about it. <laughs> um, I think Governor sounds fancy. Now, I did put his little sister, uh, Euph Euphemia, Morris up on here, uh, and I and there, there's a good reason for this. Now I'm gonna zoom out. I hope I don't zoom out too far, uh, so you can't see it. I hope this program is easy for you to see. Please let me know if you're having trouble seeing it. Uh, uh, but Euphema Morris was born in 1754. Her, she is the youngest of Louis II's children. His first was born in 1726. That's 28 years apart. So as I said, Louis Morris signed the Declaration of Independence 1776 uh, at 50 years old. And his younger brother, Governor Morris, 11 years later, signed the Constitution at just 35 years old. So 11 years passed and he was still 15 years younger than his brother was. Essentially, they are about uh, uh, 26, 28 or 26 years apart. That's quite a, that's quite an amount. And again, there are about five, there are at least two, maybe five children I left off this list because um, there are certainly a lot of them. Now, we're going to finish up here by going over to another chain. Again, uh, Louis the first up top here uh, had uh, 
several children. Uh, it was like eight or nine children. But again, we're pointing out Lewis Morris and his brother, who I'm going to zoom in on here, Robert Hunter Morris. Robert Hunter Morris, as I mentioned earlier, uh, was at points in his life, both governor of Pennsylvania and the chief justice of New Jersey. He had two children. Uh, I'm sorry, no, he had a lot of children, uh, but there are two important ones. Robert Morris, who I was a little surprised I couldn't find an image of, to be honest with you. Um, so he was born in 1745, and by when the American Revolution breaks out, he's still uh, in his mid uh, uh, late 20s. But what happens? He had just graduated law school, and he was kind of trying to stay out of it because, again, he had siblings uh, that... Um, he had siblings that, as I said, were loyalists, as Troy's pointing out, uh, <laughs> uh, that had had married at least loyalists uh, and cousins and family members that were loyalists. But he kind of tries to stay out of it. But as soon as the revolutionary government takes over, they say, OK, we need a we need a clerk for the county Robert Morris lives in. And again, this is not Robert Morris, the financier. This is Robert Morris of New York. Uh, they said, we need we need a, a clerk and they make him clerk. And then less than six months later, they say, hey, we need a chief justice. Let's go get that clerk, that county clerk to be chief justice of our brand new constitution. But the thinking was, I will remind you, he was the son of Robert Hunter Morris, who had formerly been chief justice of New Jersey. Uh, and not only does Robert Morris become chief justice of New Jersey, but later in life, he ends up uh, supporting the U.S. Constitution. And George Washington appoints him as a district, a, uh, a, a U.S. district court of New Jersey uh, uh, federal judge. And then lastly, I want to point out something here. Mary Morris. Mary Morris is, is one of the younger members of the Morris family. And I came across her story and wanted to repeat it to you guys because she, like her cousin, also fled to Canada, but she had married a physician. So they flee to Canada. They're in New Brunswick and they have, uh, uh he gets married I'm sorry, she's married, they flee to Canada, and he participates as a physician in the Continental Army. Uh, her husband ends up being important uh, locally in Canadian politics, but unlike her cousin, uh, his name is Euphemia, uh, how could I forget that name? Unlike her cousin Euphemia, uh, nope, wrong cousin, look at me, look at me. I knew, uh-oh, uh -oh, still figuring it out. Uh, unlike her cousin Isabella Morris, who came back from Canada, uh, Mary Morris never returns. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so you guys can see. I hope you guys can see this. Uh, Isabella Morris, 1746 to 1830. And then there's Mary Morris, 1746 to 1831. They live almost exactly the same lives. They move to Canada at almost exactly the same time. And then they return one of them. One of them does not return. So, again, just as a gross summation of this family, and when I say gross, uh, I'm not talking about this awful family tree I made. <laughs> I learned the program, though. I promise they'll look better in the future. Uh, the Morris family of New York, we have uh, Richard Morris, who, again, links here, missed that line, uh, was the father of Lewis Morris, who was raised by his uncle. He was a chief justice of New York, a governor of New Jersey, first lord of the manor. Uh, he had a son, Lord of the Manor. One, one son became very important in New York. One ran Pennsylvania and then essentially ran New Jersey. Oopsie daisy. Uh, and then uh, we, got a we got a declaration signer, a member of parliament, a constitution signer, a chief justice of New York. And at the same time, uh, his cousin was all chief justice of New Jersey. Now, I will give you fair warning. Uh, I got really into the Morris family this week. And this will be the person whose article is released tomorrow. <laughs> um, but we will not, uh, be discussing, uh, so we're not going to discuss too much of him today because we'll be talking about him at the week in review next week. Uh, Xiao, uh, I don't know where Isaac Norris is. I'm, uh, I'm assuming you mean Isaac Morris and I'm not sure who exactly you're referencing, although I probably have written an article about them. I was actually realized I wrote an article about a lot of people with the last name Morris, totally unrelated. Uh, just like Robert Morris in New York, uh, in Pennsylvania, unrelated, just like uh, my ancestors came over from Wales in like the early, late 1800s, totally unrelated, but <laughs> you might like to know. <laughs> so that's it for this one. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for commenting. Make sure you hit like on your way out. I would really appreciate that. Uh, if you're new here, definitely subscribe. We talk about the American Revolution uh, seven days a week. This, the family tree is brand new. So if this is your first time here, 
Tell me if you liked it or not. I won't do it ever again if you guys hated it. I would really appreciate your feedback, though. I, I did put a lot of my Saturday into it. <laughs> um, although, to be fair, a lot of my Saturday was learning how to create the program, not so much uh, making the actual product. So I I'm sure I can make more uh, finer-tuned, fancier-looking family trees in the future if you want. Um, also, like I said, right after this, I'm about to put up a new video on my Patreon page where I will talk about why things are set up a little bit differently. So if you enjoyed this, thank you so much. Make sure to hit like, and I will be back with another founder for you tomorrow.